Welcome to the Savvy Radio Show with your host, the Savvy Landlord. Up next is the best deal ever. On Fridays, check out all episodes on SavvyRadioShow.com. What's going on, Savvy Investors? This is your boy, Steve Van Kallenberg, Oklahoma City. Yep, I'm in it. I made it. I made it back from the trip. Thank God you tuned in. This episode is sponsored by, yep, yep, you, my peeps, the people that have emailed me and texted me. What up? Anyway, I, I appreciate all the feedback, the text messages, the guidance, things that I said right, things that I said wrong, things that you want me to talk about, things that you want me to break it down. I got a really good uh, email from a friend, a savvy investor. He said he liked the way I broke it down. Uh, I think it was last Friday or a couple of Fridays ago, how I negotiated a deal uh, play by play. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, I didn't really prepare for that podcast. And it seems like every podcast I don't prepare for people like, or I get the most feedback but I don't want to be lazy. I'm committed to you guys, the the investor savvy investor team out there all over the country, all the way in Virginia, all the way in Chicago, Indiana, all the folks uh, that just text me in Texas. I appreciate you uh, letting me know. Email me. I, some young investor the other day jumped on the website and uh, said, you know, I'm a rookie investor. I'm in the middle of six deals. And he says he gets a lot of content from the savvy radio show he went all the way back to episode one i was like wow that's cool i appreciate you guys hooking your boy up and let me know what's going down well today i'm going to talk about a deal i'm in the middle of this deal i have not locked it up per se but i wanted to show you when i responded back to this email i made some g's real quick it says good morning steve i've received a text from your property manager this morning. She had my phone number as a rollover from a repairman. And I talked to her and she gave me your email. My wife and I are transforming our OKC area portfolio and have decided to sell two of our rental properties in the city. Are you interested? Both tenants, both have tenants. Rents have been raised a long time, haven't been raised in a long time ago. We're shifting our holdings to 100 plus doors per property. I guess that's a property management. Best regards, blank. Well, <laughs> you know, he sent it on his iPhone. Oh, no, it was a smartphone. It says Samsung Note 3 AT&T on the bottom. So I guess it was real quick and down and dirty. What time of the day was this email? This email was on Monday, June 5th at 9.41 in the morning. Well, OGVC, I text back at Monday at 10.30. And this is what I said. I go, sorry for the delay. I am traveling for the next couple of days. Yes, I am interested. What is the addresses and asking price? So there's a there's a concept that I do how I start, I, I, you know, you heard me on the DISC. What I do is I start to create credibility with everybody. It doesn't matter if it's a private loan, money, loan lender, anyone. And I just, you know, and I'm a high D, so I get right to the point. First of all, I said, I'm sorry for the delay. It's been five hours. Most people are on drugs and uh, they seem like they're on drugs or instantaneous. And then I let them know, I didn't tell them exactly, I've been traveling, I didn't tell them where. A lot of folks out there, yeah, I'm traveling to Maine, I'm cool like that. Nope, I said I'm traveling. I don't say that I'm on a honeymoon, I don't say that I'm on vacation, I don't say I'm OG, I just say I'm traveling for a couple of days. And then, so you, you see this the psychological way I handle it. I know this is such a small sentence or two, but I want you to break it down because I think this this reels them in. And when you reel them in, you make money. So think about, take the time, chill out, relax, listen to this podcast, and there's some nuggets. I'm going to drop them all for you right here. Sorry for the delay, comma. I am traveling for the next couple of days, period. Yes, I am interested, period. What's the address and asking price? So I didn't do no explanations. I didn't say who I was. Obviously, I let the person that referred me explain that, right? You don't need to justify who you are as a real estate investor. So this applies to you rookies out there. You have to have the clout, the continuity that you are a baller investor and you don't have to say it. You just have to be confident in that. I know it's not easy in the beginning, 
But trust me, when you're borrowing money and you're getting deals, you've got to act like you've done 100 deals. So the guy emails the next morning. Let's see. So that was 1030 at night, 11 o'clock in the day the next day. This is on Tuesday. Good morning, Stephen. Thanks for getting back to me. I hope your travels are good. See how I'm already corresponding. Here's the address for this property, 64900, three bed, one bath, two car garage. Okay. We own it in a wrap. So he's already assuming that I know this lingo, right? I mean, I don't know if he knows me. Now you assume that people don't know you, but you have the respect that you don't tell them only when it's beneficial for you. Get me? You feel me? Now you know me. So 30, then he goes into the second house, blank, 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 third bedroom, three bedroom, one bath, one car garage, 40,000. We added an HVAC in 2010, a roof installation in 2012, exterior paint in 2005, 2015. Feel free to call me or my wife. Now he drops his wife. She typically works nights. She's a nurse. So, all right. So check this out. So these are Remember, in the beginning, they're, they're ballers. They want to do 100-plus doors, okay? So this is the first thing uh, right out the gate. I knew the – first of all, you should always do this no matter what. If you call me, if you're in Oklahoma City and you're like, hey, look at this deal, I do some research, my due diligence right out the gate. The first thing I did is I look up the addresses. First, I, I recognize one of the addresses because I have some houses in that neighborhood and 40000 you know, it, it's not off too bad. Okay. And then the other house, I looked it up and I was like, I own another house in that neighborhood. And I was like, nope, that's way overpriced. Now I'm traveling and now, and I think this is a new motive that you should do. You should act like you don't need properties or put in offers. I always admire wholesalers. They would just drop these low ball offers. And that's the main reason why I never really became a wholesaler is because I just don't have the balls to offer these low offers. You know, a lot of mentors just say, dude, you should offer that you would be happy with. Well, how do you make an offer if you're always wanting to buy property and it's still a deal, but these guys, these wholesalers, they have such balls that they just drop it even lower. And so I've learned to way for me to overcome that idiot behavior is now at the stage that I'm in my life. I really don't care what they think. But I'm going to shoot them straight and I'm going to give them, you know, what I think. So when I saw these two prices, 64.9, dumb, 40,000 possible, I was a little, you know, juicy. So that he was 11 o'clock email. So what I did is like I went on the county assessor. I did some research on these people. I can tell that they, you know, I don't know if they're strong. I don't recognize the last name. I look into how long they own the property. I look into how long, how much they bought it for. I noticed that they just put their name in an LLC. Hmm. Either, usually when you buy property not in an LLC, you are a rookie. Now you may buy that property in the beginning and then dump it into an LLC. I get it. But here's your nugget one. You should always buy property in your LLC from the get go. The reason why is it would be hard to chase after you later. So if you forget, I have a story, you know, 300 podcasts ago where a friend of mine's wife hit somebody and and not killed somebody, but really hurt them. And they found a property that he forgot to put in LLC and he had to pay $30,000 because he got sued. So straight out the gate, rule number one, man, nugget number one, always put it in an LLC straight out the gate. That avoids any kind of confusion. I noticed that when I looked this address up, I noticed that they moved into an LLC relatively quickly a couple of years ago. So that gave me some, you know, background on who they were. Now, again, I have not talked to these people at all. And so now I'm like, hmm, it's they sent these prices. They seem overpriced for me. And so I replied back that way. Again, I'm slow rolling them because I'm traveling. That was 11 a.m. at 10 o'clock at night. Now, most of you guys... You'd be like, man, Van Calenberg, don't you reply back faster? I normally do, but I, I'm trying some new techniques, and this technique that I'm telling you right now gets it. Now, let me give you some more anal detail. In the beginning, I never I said, sorry for the delay. Remember that email? Uh, I'll be traveling for the next two days. I didn't say anything. I didn't say, hey, blank, what's your name? Let's just say for kicks and giggles, hey, John. Hey, John, 
Sorry, for, I didn't. I didn't address them. I was straight to the point. Sorry for the delay. I'm traveling for the next couple of days. Yes, I am interested. Now, I didn't say that in the beginning. I didn't say yes, I'm interested. Sorry for the delay. I went with the emotion. Sorry for the delay. I am traveling. So three points in. What's the addresses and prices? He gets back with me. Good morning, Stephen. See, now he's softer than me. Thanks for getting back to me. I hope your travels are good. Blank address is sixty four nine three. Bed got it. It's blank blank got it. And then he gives into the, some of these details. Well, this is what the nugget why you made it to ten minutes into this podcast. I go. This time I said hi, John, comma, space double space. I appreciate the opportunity. No exclamation, period. After a quick pull of comps, your asking prices are geared for retail buyers. <laughs> Clap it up for your boy VC because I'm going to bring it to you. Let me say it to you again. After a quick pull of comps, you asked, your asking prices are geared towards a retail buyer. So that I, I actually st- took some time to write that line. I wanted to slap this dude in the face like, why are you wasting my time? I am a real estate investor. Why are you sending me deals? I know you're trying to sell me, you're trying to, like I'm a fool that you're going to try to unlock to me. That's what I want to say. I just want to punk people. Dude, I'm a real estate investor. I got to make money. I can't buy the house at $64,900. It doesn't even cash flow. I don't even ask for rents yet. So my technique here, guys, is that I'm like, just a little information, fire back. I'm creating dialogue. That's what you want to do. And I want to drag out that dialogue as long as possible. Even though I'm a super duper high D and I want to get it done. It's like, look, hi, what's your name? Let's get it on. No, you got to slow roll this deal. You slow roll it. You get, you make money. So I go, I appreciate the opportunity, period. After a quick pull of comps, your asking prices are geared for retail buyers, period. And then I say, when you need to sell quick and want to speed closing, I buy at a discount investor pricing. I just wanted to be up front. I, I, there's a lot of wholesalers that slap people around. They're real arrogant. I'm trying not to be arrogant. I never said I owned 160 properties. I never told him who I was. He had enough clout that he contacted me. And then I said, period. This is my another favorite line. I go, we, no, I didn't say I. I said, we skip realtor fees and super inspections, period. And then I was like, okay, I was going to send that, right? And then I just shut it down. I go, for blank address is around 45 to 50. That's the one that he sent me 64.9. I said, I would buy it at 45 all day personally. And I looked them up. They're worth about 60, 60 something, 65. I go, the other address, I would pay around 28 to 32. Now, this is bomb, folks. This is how you make money. I made eight G's already, and I'm probably going to buy this deal. And then I said, oh, this is the last line Good luck selling them. So let me let me read it to you again because if you're slow, you know, you drive and pull over, write this down because I just locked up these mugs. I just made money. I'm going to tell you how much I'm going to make just by an email. I go, hi, John, comma. I appreciate the opportunity, period. After a quick pull of comps, your asking prices are geared for retail buyers. Ooh, I love that. Well, trademark that mother. When you need to sell quick and want speed to close, I buy at a discount commas or parentheses investor pricing period. We skip the realtor fees and super inspections period blank around 45 to 50. That's the one that was 64.9. The other address around 28 to 32. And then my last line said, good luck selling them period. And honestly, that was the technique that I, I mean, I think I've learned over the years that you just have to walk away in, you know, you are a cash buyer, even though you may have to finance a deal. And I know that my goal that I'm trying to buy 20 units and I'm trying to gobble up everywhere, every party that I go to, every real estate meeting I go to, there's no deals out there. There's not. It, it's skinny right now. So when your mind is playing tricks on you, Van Keller, you, you got a goal for 20 units, you got a goal for 20 and you, you're, you're walking away from stuff. But see, here's the deal. You've got to walk away and be strong to your numbers. If you are educated as a real estate investor, you are because you're listening to this podcast, then you got to run the numbers. I know the numbers on those properties. I want to buy them at 70%, 75% ARV. I want to cash flow like a big dog. And if I bought them for that prices. So 
just that one email that I sent. Let me click on the button again. I sent that email at 10 p.m. at night on June 6th, which is a Tuesday, on the following Wednesday morning, 7.43. I got this dude on Locky Lock. He goes, okay, can we do 32 on the small one and 58 on the other? We can't go any longer. Do we have a deal? <laughs> Uh, I wish you'd play some music, man. You know, I'm not big. I got like 10 fans. So this is how you do it. So let's just run the numbers, peeps. Okay. 8,040 to 32 on the one. And that one's about 7,000 off the other. So eight plus seven is 15 G's. Now, Remember, if you follow me at all, lock it up, lock it up, lock it up. The, the interesting thing that scares me about this deal, the one that's down to 32, I would probably buy it for 32. Hopefully this dude doesn't listen to the radio show. But I have to be cool and calm. What, what was interesting, here's the thing that his email, let's read his email small. Stephen, comma, good morning, period. Hmm. Okay, bro, big. I, I'm assuming he's not on his phone this time, comma. Now, okay, I'm going to tell you how I'm going to handle this dude. We can do 32 on the one, and the other, the other, we can do 58, period. Cool. All right. No problem. But this is what's interesting. He goes, we can't go any longer. He's getting lower. So he's already telling me, I guess that's your fixed price, homie. Well, we're about to break that off. And he says, do we have a deal? I thought that was very interesting. Do we have a deal? So what does that translate to you party investors out there, savvy investors? To me... That means he's motivated. He wants to know. And so I hit him with, are they vacant? Now, I didn't read, I don't read emails. So the very first email, if, but I'm, I'm engaging him again. I didn't say, I never said we had a deal. I just said, are they vacant? And when can you show them? And that response was, so he sent me at 730 in the morning. And then three hours later at 1040 in the morning, I replied. So my emails are actually strategically replying uh, faster to engage him more. That's another nugget for you. Sometimes I slow play him. Honestly, I was traveling at this time. I was in a freaking vehicle driving across the country. So, but I could, I was stopping at rest stops. I could email him back. Interesting. Now he goes, both have tenants. I knew that if I would read the damn emails, but I didn't. Our leases have 24 hour notice. <laughs> I'm a landlord. I know that. Our blank resident is out of town. Ideal time for us would be Tuesday afternoon. We would announce the visit for insurance purposes. It's interesting, like, so these are all techniques that I know about, you know, when you show property to a potential person, it's like insurance purposes. So he's somewhat, I think, a relative, because you just don't divulge that information by email. So if I was really going to analyze this deal, what he's saying is accurate, but you know, you don't really need to say it. You just, you, a seller, buyer, you're in control. And so that was the, on that day. I, so he texted, he emailed me at 1244 on Wednesday the 7th. I replied back with no before. Okay. This time I said, Hey, hi, John. I th- my whole interaction with this guy has been straight, just writing, I guess, to the point. I replied right back at uh, 2 o'clock, 152. I said, set it up for Tuesday, June 13th. And I put on there the effing date, June 13th. Some people just get confused in dates and times. I want to be very clear. I never told them when I was going to get back into town. I never told them anything other than that. And so he replied right back. And this time he CC'd his wife during this process. Fascinating. And he hasn't been CCing her, but he finally CCs her after all this engagement, back and forth, engaging each other. He goes, we have confirmation for Tuesday on one. I will get the time nailed down, quotes, and get the other ready for the back-to-back. Best regards. And then I just replied back now that he sent that on at 9.30 at night on Wednesday. And I replied back at 5.55 on Thursday because I'm an early riser. That's how we do it. And I just said, okay. So that's it, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hopefully you learned. 
uh, what I, how I negotiate is very interesting. He, you know, now he has a signature on the bottom. He didn't have a signature in bottom. Uh, you know, before he didn't CC his wife. Now he's CCing his wife. But the goal here is to show you the play by play, how I do it to build uh, credibility, to uh, engage them. And I think, you know, just getting the properties down 15 G's is pretty remarkable with little effort. And I think the way, not because I'm the savvy landlord or definitely is because I have some experience, but just you listen to this podcast should give you the experience that you need. You just have to engage them and talk to them like you know what you're doing and you can definitely already get a discount. Now, phase two, when I go look at these properties on Tuesday party, people guess what? The price may come down through my inspections. So to be continued. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivational episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at Landlord Book and always be buying assets.